expenditures funds to come in and take a further. Some of these community programs and housing could be doubled up with the redevelopment fund. And that way we're kind of leveraging those ARPA funds with other funds we have. It doesn't, we don't have to just depend on this, if that makes sense. It does make sense, but uh, sure. I, I think if we're going to, and Jim is definitely right, the reserve, if we should be working on the reserve, I think we should just take that 200000 mile out of the infrastructure project. Okay. Like, I don't see where the other ones come in. I agree with that. I agree with that too. And then also, myself, like you, that ambulance is important. If I have to have more of education on the ambulance, Chief Sport, we got more ambulances, and if we break the contract with the town and we get out of the ambulance service, what are we going to do with all these ambulances? If we just run in the, in the city with a tight Every time I turn around, another ambulance, another ambulance. I, I need an education on this. So the one ambulance we got is not ours. It Correct. belongs to White Pine County. We lease it for one dollar. We break that contract. They go back. They take that ambulance back. We're down to two ambulances. Right now, I can go back and dig statistics. There's a ton of times we've got all three of those ambulances on 911 calls in the city limits. Okay. And my so, counter on that is we get we break the contract contract with the county. We get a mutual aid come into the city. County, what are we going to get mutually? I don't know, Pat, but I'll tell you what, we're, we're getting million dollars worth of ambulance. I understand the need for ambulances, but every time we come around the budget, another ambulance, another ambulance, another ambulance. And I agree, there are times there are. But it's not our fault that somebody fell and broke a leg. We'll right. do the best we can when we get there. Exactly. I'll we'll, we'll go whatever direction you guys want to go. So, but, I, but when, it, when he comes back on us, I could provide an ambulance. I'm directing the people to you guys. Sure. Not so let's, let, let me just be clear on, on what we're talking about today, too, is this is just, this would just be budget. We go back in and decide kind of where that gets spent. I, if right. I'm not mistaken, some of your asked on just other equipment came up to at least this, didn't it? Right. You may know, remember when we first did this thing, it started out, and the, my initial list was at like 320. Sure. Um, you had a bunch of returns on it then. It got whittled down to like 272 or 273, whatever that exact number is. I got that. So we had still that equipment there that you know we we chopped out of it on stuff. So um, I just knowing the way everything works, I don't see where um, you know right now with you know the amount of calls we're turning. Um, we, ambulance, <coughs> excuse me, ambulance service in McGill right now is non-existent. Ambulance service in Ruth is non-existent. You know, we, we signed that contract to go to the city. If you guys want to get out of the contract, that's what you guys to do. Um, we do, you know, right now, Lund and Baker are the only two entities in White Pine County that assist us in any way, shape, or form on calls. So, But if, as much as I do not want to see an outside <coughs> agency in there for medical right. service, that is a possibility. We have got to put some of this onus back on the county. We right. are covering so much in the county and getting nothing for it. So that's all I'm saying is right. that big red building has two medical facilities out there. And those medical facilities that work in other parts of the state that may have ruined fire departments, I'll give you that much. But once again, we have a capital budget project. And if we have to do that, that means the rest of the city departments pull away from that. I just want to see more study and, and a little more pressure pushed off on the county on this right here. They got, how many animals have they got? They got them out there at Silver Lions and brought them back. Right. You know, they got them stacked around that big red building like this. And right now, I think all the only thing they've got that are licensed, they've got one license that they were trying to put lack on. It's the last several calls out there. There's been non-existent help from them. Um, and, and I agree, they, they need to step up and they're going to have to do more stuff. And I brought this up in the commission meeting the last time that, um, you know, we've got some serious issues with them not uh, attending on training and everything else. And, and it's slowly getting to the point that I feel that we're getting more and more dependent on that we're just going to do everything. And it just ain't going to happen. I mean, so it's, once again, this isn't a decision on whether or not to buy the ambulance tonight. It's just to allocate kind of a rough budget number. I like to earmark the money, and then we got to look at it when the time comes. If it's not needed, we don't need it, I'm fine. They'll spend it. And there's, there's nothing that keeps the council from going back in and saying, okay, we didn't end up using it for that. Let's reallocate this. Right. It'd be nice to have an earmark if something happens, you know, we have, you know, something goes on, we lose one, something, you know, instead of scrambling looking for where it is. Because when the time comes, we don't need it, things are going good, things are functioning fine in the county, fine, we'll push it off. Use that money towards tiny homes or 
whatever else is on that list. It, it don't matter to me, but it'd be nice to see how it earmarked. So if we do need it, the funding is there and available for it. Did we change the title to the EMS, fire department slash EMS? Sure. So we can, if we did that, and then the suggestion from the council, the city council of Williams Harper is that we take the infrastructure from two to it'd be 1.8 million with the $200,000 going towards uh, general funds. Cushions, but for budgetary, yeah. How do we feel about that? Well, yeah, I would like to make a comment because I, I disagree with what the all is on the needs that. And number one is that uh, we have, what's, what's the age of our oldest ambulance? The city's ambulance. Uh, the oldest city one is the first one that we bought brand new. Uh, and it's, I want to say, I have to go look at the thing, I want to say 2016. Okay, and if you were to break that down, how soon could you replace it? Right now, when I talked to the guy that was here on Saturday, um, I just quizzed him a little about it. He says, tell me right now, if we ordered an ambulance today, we wouldn't even see a chassis for two years. And then you got probably another year that they'd take to build a box. So we're talking about three years off. I think yeah. we do need to put that in reserve. And now there'll, there'll be time for... The, the, no, no, no. The, the market can change going forward. Right now, everything's so screwed up, the supply chain everywhere. It don't matter what you're trying to do, everything goes back. Oh, it's COVID related, it's COVID related. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so tired of hearing that. Sure. It's been over and done with, but the, the yeah. supply market in general, worldwide, is just a mess right now. And it could get better, and it might not be that in a couple of years, but I, I still agree. I think it'd be nice to have that money here. Just to be clear, that money is currently being voted on to be earmarked. It's just open ended at the moment, and we'll have the ambulance discussion at a future date. When the time comes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if, uh, if those changes are amenable to the council, I'll entertain a motion on that. Same, state, state so we're doing 1.8 million for infrastructure, uh, 500,000 for housing, park cemetery. We did uh, fire department EMS for 250,000, uh, park cemetery for 150, and the programs for 150,000. Fire department EMS, I think it's okay. Is there a motion? Motion from Councilman Williams Carper. Do I have a second? Second. Anybody? I'll second that. Second from Councilman Spear. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll go back to our uh, public hearing at 5.30, item 6, the narrow recess the regular city council meeting for a public hearing at 5.30 p.m. on the following topics. Item 1, council members city building official Peterson. Public hearing discussion only consideration of a petition for vacation or abandonment of a road or easement by applicants Robert and Joseph R. H. Diamante, uh, who wish to have the street center easements between APN 001 141 02, 001 141 03, and 001 141 04 abandoned, and also an 82 foot by 25 foot strip of 3rd Street abutting 001 141 02, Ely, Nevada. The general location is Ely Street and 3rd Street, Ely, Nevada. Um, and we'll open this third session. Buzz. Buzz here. I'm Representative Dave Martins. Um, open for questions. Obviously, it's been on the agenda before. We declare a player that's now been corrected. So, this is just public discussion at the moment, right? Huh? But they may have some questions, and we'll have you back up. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> is there any comment from the public? Robert and Joseph R.H. 
the Amante, who wish to have the streets and their easements between APN 001-141-02, 001-141-03, and 001-141-04 abandoned, and also an 82 foot by 25 foot strip of Third Street abutting 001-141-02, E. Nevada. The general location is Ely Street and Third Street, E. Nevada. So the corrections have been done. Yes, uh, Pleasure, sir. Uh, the correction has been done, changed from the 82 by 15 to 82 by 25. And the uh, original exhibit showed. And, and we're back in front of you for uh, any further questions. Are there any questions from the council? I just want to confirm those. Okay. Where it says that I'm just relaying this back to me. It says, I am also an 82 foot by 25 foot strip of 3rd Street. The individual seems taking part of the street. It is correct. So the question that the individual had when the last time we were here was coming off of the Renaissance Village, the road going to be narrowed, narrowed down? Uh, the actual improvements are quite a bit inside of uh, this 25-foot uh, this strip that uh, it's up for discussion on the abandonment. There's, there's no road improvements on that currently. We're narrowing down to 60 foot with sim line with the rest of the third street. Would it be correct to say that it's part of the right of way but not part of the road? Correct. It is designated right of way, but it's. Uh, yeah. it, what it winds up being is 50 foot street, five on each side for sidewalk for a 60 foot right of way. When this is done, right? That would be the potential. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah 60, it's 50 the, foot street still, but not narrow on the street any. It's just narrow on the right of way, and then on each side, that the reason they're asking we want to take it down to 25 foot is that five foot on each side for curb there sidewalk. That's correct. For uh, 60 foot. For right any right. standards on their collector street, which is our larger street, that yeah, that is. Uh, okay, right, thanks for the clarification. I'll let you know. Are there any other questions? Uh, what's the pledge of the council on? I would like to move to. Motion to approve this from Councilman Spear. Do I have a second? All Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Carried in so ordered. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes. How about we get to the clock road problem? We'll get, we'll get at that right now. Yeah. So we'll go back to new business. We're going to take item 11. Council members, uh, building official Craig Peters in discussion for possible action. Approval of an emergency abatement action pursuant to the city code 4-1-22 to exterminate and remove a cockroach infestation at 1128 East Alton Street, parcel number 00206803, determined by the city building official to be a public nuisance that places the public in immediate danger of health, safety, and welfare. Mr. Peterson. And counsel, before Mr. Peterson speaks, I do believe that the owner of that property is present on uh, Zoom. Is that correct, Jim? We're going to start. I appreciate you letting me know. We're going to start with Mr. Peterman. Sure. Um, certainly. Thank you, um, everyone. Uh, I just want to give everybody a quick timeline as far as how this thing has started and how it progressed. Um, I was contacted by the Sheriff's Department on 77 this year uh, in regards to an infestation that was causing you know, quite a nuisance in the area. Um, I did investigate that day and determined that indeed we had quite a problem over there. I made contact with the property owner. Um, on 7-7, um, I advised that he get professional management on that date, um, and I had kind of had some, some informal communications with him between then and uh, the 29th of, of July, uh, which he had stated to me that the professional help was going to start on 8-1. On 8-1, I was contacted by the property asking if I knew any remediation professionals that would be able to assist with this problem. Um, I put him in contact with Jess with Apex, who's our, our local pest control professional, um, I was told that um, a couple days later on 8-12, I was, I was told that uh, Jess and um, the owner had agreed to treatment to begin on 8-13. Uh, I was then contacted on 8-15 by uh, Apex, who informed me that uh, no deal had been uh, made and no treatment had been started. So that's why uh, we put this, this item on the agenda. Um, I do have a small update. Uh, I did get a... Uh, a work contract between uh, a remediation contractor from the Las Vegas area and the property owner uh, with a proposed start date of 9-1 uh, for them to be up here to begin remediation. Uh, with that being said, 
Um, I am still asking for the emergency abatement authority um, just in case this deal goes the way that the other deals went and doesn't, doesn't materialize. I would like for the authority to uh, immediately step in and hire a contractor at that point. Um, if, 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 again, if, if there's remediation that's, that's been contracted doesn't take place in that time frame. 9-1 um, is quite honestly the earliest I could get a contractor there as well um, from the numerous contractors that I've spoken with. Um, I do have a number that are willing to come to Ely and handle this problem, but again, Thursday of next week is the earliest I was going to be able to get that taken care of. So um, I would still ask for that emergency abatement, whether or not um, we need to, to spend the funds in order to abate this issue will be determined by whether or not treatment begins on the, the 1st of uh, uh, September. Who is the owner of the property? I believe uh, Jack Schofield, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Schofield, if you're on, if there's something you'd like to address the council on this, we'd be happy to hear you. I did have a brief discussion with him prior to the meeting, and he said that he would, wouldn't have any comment. Okay. Uh, that's not any his response. Are there any questions for the building? Well, not my concern. I live way away from there, but I think these people are concerned. It says, uh, respect the female German cockroach to produce an egg capsule every six weeks. So yes. we've been dealing with this since before July 7th, so these babies are out there making little cockroaches all over the place. And it's unfortunate we can't get this thing out a lot quicker. I mean, 10,000 in one year, one adult will produce. Page uh, one of that. Correct. And, and I want to give uh, the opportunity for the property owner to remediate the issue on his own and again help to facilitate that success. Um, I was promised repeatedly that it was going to be taken care of in a timely manner. I uh, followed up as often as I could, and, and you know, much to my disappointment, every time I followed up, uh, there seemed to be a change in the game. Um, since then, in order to help, you know, stop the festering, I've ordered to shut off the water over there. Um, the, the entire building has been vacated at this point, and I've closed all of the units of occupancy. Uh, I know that doesn't necessarily help stem the tide, but it, it at least kind of helps us, um, you know, address the problem from a vacant building standpoint. So to be clear, there there currently is a plan for remediation to get next Thursday. Correct. That's that's what's been. Been conveyed to me. I've seen a contract, a sales, uh, a sales contract received from the company in Las Vegas that's going to be handling this. And I was in communication with the gentleman who owns that company today, and, and, and I told him 9 1 was going to be the hard date before, um, you know, if, if granted the emergency authorization. Um, so you're seeking um, authorization to abate from the council in the case that that doesn't proceed as planned? At this point, correct. I do have money in my budget that will cover the abatement, and then however we recover that is going to be, you know, outside of. I, um, I have a question. How Please. do you know the company that he was hired would do as good of a job that I would expect that he would do? Is there any guarantee? They're, they're a licensed contractor in the state of Nevada. And that's that's as far as I got. They they you know serve a, a large clientele down in, in the Las Vegas area. Um, I am not a pest control expert. I have reached out to pest control experts. Um, you know I'm not going to say that um, what I've been told by the pest control experts that I've talked to um, necessarily line up with the remediation method that's going to be proposed that was proposed by the company from Las Vegas. Um, but I'm a lay person when it comes to um, infestation remediation. I've, I've learned more about German cockroaches in the last. 45 days than I ever wished to in my entire life, um, and I hope not to deal with this situation again. Um, it's, a, it's a very serious problem. I've seen one other infestation that was that was even remotely close to as bad as this. Um, and as a matter of fact, I made a visit to the site on Wednesday um, just to give grab some more photographic evidence, and um, there were still cockroaches climbing out the windows, you know, as I was there. So, um, but yeah, no, I. I Apologize for any delay on my end, but but again, we need to, to let them remediate the problem, you know, before we took the emergency action. Um, or at least, you know, I was promised that that was going to happen all the way through, and unfortunately, it doesn't materialize. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. Um, do you know know enough to let us know when that um, infestation is worked upon? How long it takes before we see some results? Um, well, the company right now is proposing fumigation, which is going to be more or less an immediate um, solution to the problem. And the, uh, part of their proposal was uh, a granular treatment around the property to prevent the spread to the neighboring properties, um, you know, which obviously we already have. But, uh, but, but to prevent you know, a, a wholesale escape of these things, um, 
you know, and, and again, I've gotten a little bit of conflicting information from different people that I've talked to as far as uh, the best practice on this, and, and I just don't feel qualified to speak to the best practice, but, um, you know, I've, I've gotten a couple of different sources now, and, and you know, there is some disagreement, but, um, you know, it's, it's seemingly minor. Mrs. Robinson, you've carried it in continue your... Yes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure that you guys know how bad it is. Uh, in your leaflet, on page one, it'll tell you what the life expectancy of a cockroach is. A bad infestation, of which this is, 10,000 produced in one year. You probably got that many down there in that basement right now. The walls, ceiling, from what I understand, they just crawl. Uh, then, on page uh, four, why I am so upset about this is, on page four, I identified uh, what diseases that causes. I know three of the neighbors that have found cockroaches in their home now have uh, have a, uh, they have an Im um, immune system of which my husband is one of them. So this disease, you know, uh, it, they carry this disease. So uh, I just want you to, to know, it's, you know, we need to take care of it right away. Uh, Bob and I went out on our patio before we came, and I took pictures of, of what five different cockroaches that were running across the patio. They were sick because I've got a moat around my house. I've been spraying so much. My grandson uh, from Tucson came up, and he and Jess put their heads together and tried to come up with a plan for us and it has worked in our home. And uh, like I say, uh, uh, they're getting through, but they're, they're sick. But these other people that live in this neighborhood, uh, they don't have that. They haven't started uh, that uh, process that I have been going in you know, for months. So there's real problem. And another thing I wanted you to know is all that uh, all the, the belongings that belong to all those people in those apartments, they took them someplace. They're living someplace. They were cockroach infested. So Lund's got in cockroaches now. Wherever the other parties are living, they've got cockroaches now. So this is a real, real serious problem. But my husband really nailed it uh, when he said, that uh, my husband describes the situation perfectly. The apartment complex is an incubator for cockroaches. It needs to be taken care of immediately, or they just spread all over. Okay. Are there any other people from the neighborhood who <laughs> wanted to be heard? I'd like to say something, but I'd like to see if I can do it from my seat, please. Uh, compromise on standing out. Of You'll be as loud as you can be so we can get your hey, I, uh, I don't think the PA system's working anyway. They, they're all still all working. I'd like to say is that uh, we have a real bad infestation with a creature that carries some real bad diseases. <coughs> and almost all of the neighbors are older like me and have compromised immune systems. And it really bothers me when I walk out of my patio and a disease-carrying bug is running all over. And I just feel something should be done as quickly as things can be done. Thank you, Mr. Robson. Is there anybody else in the neighborhood who'd like to be heard? I'm Bill Wilson, and I live across the alley from the uh, subject department. And I've got to sing this song. 
I woke up Monday morning and looked up on the wall. The roaches and the bedbugs are having a game of ball. The score is not to nothing. The bedbugs are ahead, the roaches hit a home run and then knocked me out of bed. And that was, I learned in New York City apartments in the 1930s. And at that time, that was the appropriate jingle. You know, I certainly hope that Ely doesn't face the same need for another version of that. But I want to thank uh, Mr. Peterson for his work uh, helping us uh, get our senses and, and plan together. We do have a, we found two or three roaches in our, in our garage, which is closest to the, uh, to the alley. Uh, and we certainly found new miles of bath lumber that we've rarely visited before for insecticides. Uh, but uh, we, we do appreciate any help that we can get from the city. Thank you. My name is Wesley Ann Copeland, and I live across the alley from the cockroaches. And anything that you can do to expedite this would be wonderful that they're out of control, and it's just really, really nasty. So we would really appreciate you, please. Well, thank you. Councilman Yeah, I was in this, I never realized this, I had a big bug problem once in the neighborhood, but anyway. I just was trying to research a little about the egg because this is a big problem what I see in what you guys represented here. But it looks like their, their, their eggs take about 30 days to hatch once they're out. But, so you, you, you just can't, it's going to be a couple of times to eradicate these guys, or maybe even three, I don't know. But it says 30 days on their ideal temperature. That's a holy moly. These things are yeah, pretty pretty unique, so I think we should do an, an, an abatement, an emergency abatement, I really believe that. And I think that we not only want to make sure this guy has a plan to not only come up here and spray him, but come back a couple more times after that. So, so the, the proposal that's being made right now by the remediation company is for fumigation. So they're going to actually pump the toxic um, gas into the house um, in order to, to kill them all in one shot, essentially. And that, that's kind of the strategy that's been laid out to me um, as far as the proposal to use this method. Uh, the method that's been proposed to me by other professionals is boric acid and a growth and head growth treatment. And that is a multiple step treatment, uh, which, which generally takes two or three visits. Um, so, but again, I'm, I'm getting conflicting information from professionals. Um, I need it treated. Um, you know, and again, if, if they go through the remediation as far as the fumigation and it's unsuccessful and uh, we still have the issue, if I have the emergency authorization, then I can get, you know, I can approve the other treatments to come in, uh, you know, without any further action. So I will entertain a motion on this side. I'll move to approve this. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. And Councilman Williams, Dr. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Any opposed? And we appreciate those from the neighborhood coming, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, we will move back to our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, item B1, uh, Mayor Robertson discussion for possible action, annual performance evaluation of City Fire Chief Patch Court, including but not limited to consideration of character, alleged misconduct, professional competence, or physical or mental health. Possible action includes, but is not limited to termination, suspension, demotion, reduction in pay, and promotion, endorsement, engagement, retention, or no action. Mayor yes. I have a comment from Councilman Carson and the message. Okay. Hi, Jennifer. Again, I'm sorry I cannot attend the meeting tonight, but I do believe that store is a great fire chief. He's very committed to not only the city meeting, but the county as well. He's a great leader and does a wonderful job with the staff and the public. I am in full support of the race for him. I urge the council tonight to please consider the state.
We've been running one than two people short the last year and a half, um, two years almost. But with the help of the volunteers, government only, career staff, myself, we've covered every college came in. That includes.